twenty dollars or something, you know, and um, yeah, here I am. So yeah, it's always what I've been excited about. Twenty bucks back then would have been all right as well. Oh, it was heaps. Got me like four trips to Macca's, I reckon. <laughs> 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 All right, welcome to episode one of Newy Tech People. Uh, the guest today is uh, Matt Finch uh, from NIB. Thanks for coming here, Matt. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me. I'm pretty excited about being guest number one. That's pretty cool. No, it's all good. Matt and I know each other from uh, a couple of years ago. Met at uh, some Newy Tech startup events uh, probably three years ago now and I've kept in touch. So hopefully the conversation uh, is not too stop start. Hopefully we get a little bit of information out that people find useful. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really good. Um, Particularly since we started at the Tech and Startups Meetup, I think that's pretty pretty appropriate. So yeah, cheers, man. Yeah. Mate, I think uh, to give everyone a bit of an overview of uh, who you are, what you what you've been doing, it'd be awesome to try to give people a quick two minute spiel on what you've been doing of late. Um, I know you've uh, got some pretty exciting news of one of the the speeches you just did, so it'd be you know awesome to let the people know about this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll um, try and give you a quick recap of my journey. So I'm a Newcastle boy, born and bred. Uh, grew up in Adamstown. Moved overseas to the States when I was 18, so pretty young, packed up, went over there, um, met my wife, got married, that, that's a whole other story, but uh, ended up working in the States for about seven years, so I spent around five years in Texas and then a couple of years in California. Um, California was sort of a pivotal moment, I think, for my career and, and tech-wise, we were near Silicon Valley, um, heaps of stuff going on down there, but then sort of had to decide between family and, and work. I had a daughter who was three and a half at the time. So we decided let's pack up, move back to Newcastle, start a family, um, sold everything, jumped in a plane, moved back here, um, had, had no work, had no job, had, well, I was actually, we were actually living with my parents, so that was a pretty interesting time. But job at NIB came up about a month after I got back. Um, what was that doing, job? Uh, IT business systems administrator. So it was um, really in sort of, server administration, network administration, that sort of stuff, looking after all the kind of core uh, business systems at, at NIB Health Fund, so their policy administration system and claims and that sort of stuff. Um, I was doing a similar thing in the States, so I guess looking after uh, servers and storage and that sort of thing. So, Sweet. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been at NIB ever since I got back. That was six years ago. Uh, I've been at NIB six years this month, actually, so it's, it's pretty good timing. Um, first few years in, in that system uh, business systems administrator role um eventually about three years ago um when i met yourself moved into a different role uh, at nib around uh, architecture and strategy particularly around our infrastructure um and most importantly our, our cloud um journey and, and what was starting to be our cloud journey at nib and how we were going to embrace embrace things like amazon web services and and use that um so i spent the last three years really focused on taking nib on that that cloud journey um, and I guess that culminated in the talk I gave at the AWS Summit, like you mentioned. So I gave a talk earlier this year in April. Um, it's published online now. You can check it out. We'll link it up in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, cool. We'll do that. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's a pretty good recap, that talk of our cloud journey at NIB over the last three years. It's been a big DevOps movement, um, really embraced continuous delivery, um, baked in a lot of security. Um, and now we've got a really solid sort of cloud platform that's uh, really enabling the business to start doing a lot of innovative things and um, really underpinning my, my sort of next role at, at NIB as well. So yeah. Sweet, mate. Let's go into that. Oh, let's go straight into that, right? Okay. New role. It's pretty exciting, mate. I think uh, there's not too many of these type of roles around Newcastle. And what it, what is the, the title of the role? Give us a quick overview of... Uh, of what you th what you think you'll be doing? I think it's a bit of a greenfield type operation, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely is. So, um, head of emerging technology is the role. So, pretty pretty cool title. I'm pretty happy about that one. Um, the focus of the role really is about uh, continuing to build on top of, I guess, the the, the good platforms we put in place and starting to drive some innovative technology. So, what we found through going through this cloud journey is that. Now that we've got, um, I guess, all of this capacity in the cloud and um, all of these new technologies through Amazon and others, uh, we can really start to invest more into experiments, experimenting with things like artificial intelligence. Um, we're looking at different wearables projects and wearables experiments. Um, we are a health insurer, but we're moving ourselves more towards being a health partner and, and looking at things like health personalization. So how do we... Um, you know, use things like machine learning to provide insights to you to make you live a, a longer and healthier life. So 
the emerging technology role is really wrapped up around all those things, health tech, AI, uh, IoT, um, looking at uh, voice interfaces like Alexa and Google Home devices, um, running kind of short, sharp experiments, looking at what problems are our customers having and, and yeah, trying to um, see some of these emerging technologies that are coming down and um, using it to solve those problems. So yeah, really exciting time. And like you said, it's Greenfield. So um, you know, kind of, I was kind of given a bit of a vision about where the company wants to go and how technology is going to really underpin that. But how we do that and how we get there is sort of um, you know, in my hands a bit. So yeah. Mate, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, thanks, mate. Look forward to it. That yeah, sounds like a great opportunity, mate. Is there, will they be looking to build out a team in and around that? I think I don't think there's too many sort of AI machine learning based <laughs> roles in and around Newcastle, obviously. But I think, mate, that sounds like it could be a cool opportunity that you know other people might be able to have to join that team down the track. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so I really only started, I don't know, let's say two weeks ago. So um, there will be team at some point. I'll have, have some people in a team reporting to me. Um, right now, um, my main focus is on looking at uh, really around that that value proposition that the business wants to transition to around health, empowerment and personalization and working with a lot of different people around the business to understand what are the existing problems our customers are having and how we can um, underpin that. And then once I've kind of got a pretty clear roadmap about what we're doing and what kind of skills we need as part of that, um, we've got a bit of a team. But you know, I don't think, um, me personally, I don't think somebody needs to be an AI expert or they need to be a you know, blockchain expert or something like that. Um, you know, I'd, I'd really be sort of looking for people that can think outside the box, take risks, um, think about the customer problems first, uh, some of that sort of design thinking and human-centered design thing, I think, is really important. Um, and somebody that's just not afraid to embrace new things and, and try some stuff out and, and move really quickly. I'm a big fan of moving fast, um, sh always shipping stuff and, and getting things out. So yeah, I'm, yeah, man, I'm a big believer in people over skills. So yeah, I take a person with the right attitude over skills and probably argue that someone that says they're a machine learning and AI expert <laughs> or blockchain expert at this day and age, yeah, and they're pretty new technologies. I'd argue that. Uh, you know, being considered an expert, there's probably a very, very few number of people that could, you know, legitimately claim to be that. Yeah, yeah. I think anytime we see sort of five to ten years of AI or blockchain, um, yeah. got to raise an eyebrow a bit. Yeah, so. I love those characters. Yeah, that's it. Um, mate, that's uh, mate, that's an exciting journey. I think, mate, the AWS, uh, the AWS speech you da you gave, I I went through. I think I watched it for the second time last night. Yeah, right. Okay, bit of an encore. Yeah. Oh, mate, <laughs> I'm getting your viewer numbers up there. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you can pay me afterwards for that. Yeah, but, definitely. Uh, uh, the Red Queen, the Red Queen platform. I just, mate, I thought it was quite exciting. I think um, having a look at what you're doing and what NIB are doing um, in relation to what's going on in Newcast, I think you guys are quite, a, you know, toward the forefront of the things going on using new technologies. I think it's exciting. I think it's exciting for Newcastle, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you know, fortunately, we've got a pretty entrepreneurial CEO, and we've got a lot of support from right from the top down, and um, we've got a lot of really great thinkers. Um, at NIB and, and everyone gets given a, a bit of time and um, and the freedom to innovate. We don't really have a innovation lab or an innovation hub or anything like that. Um, we've got a culture of sort of status quo is death and everyone's thinking about how do we not keep doing the same thing. Um, there's the whole idea of racing the Red Queen, which you can hear, hear more about in, in the talk. But um, yeah, I think the support's great and, and the fact that we can work on some of these innovative things is, is really cool. And one thing I definitely want to say is my new role is not head of innovation. Um, <laughs> I, I hear that a lot and uh, it's definitely not going to be about that. It's just about giving us a bit of headspace to focus on some of these emerging technologies and, and try a few things. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, I think you've got to give them props, for, uh, give NIB props for actually, you know, creating a role like this and probably to yourself for helping create that role. But yeah. for them, uh, you know, agreeing to put that sort of role in, I think it's easy to say, hey, we want to be an innovative company, but... You know, you can sort of do that in the spare time after you do your full-time job and all these other tasks and yeah, then we'll innovate. But yeah, there's, there's yep. a few, there's a bit of that goes on. Oh, we want to be an innovative company, but we don't really, you know, we talk talk the talk, but yeah, backing yeah. it up with uh, some actions, it's, I think it's few and far between. So actually seeing a company investing in that, yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, the, the amount of support and right back three years ago when we sort of pitched the cloud journey and the cloud dream and um yeah heaps of support rallied behind that and, and made it happen and and cleared the way and a lot of blood sweat and tears to get there but um you know nobody ever said stop which is great so yeah happy days yeah. giving a bit of a you know i interviewed these people as i was saying day in day out i think it's quite interesting to find out sort of why technology right like what what got you into technology in the beginning like winding it right back yeah right um i think 
I've sort of always been interested in, in technology and tech, probably because uh, I don't know, I played a lot of video games as a kid and my daughter plays a lot of video games now, so hopefully that's a good time. But um, yeah, I think technology is always in a constant state of change and, and I'm pretty excited about change and um, pretty excited about doing new things and, and thinking differently. So technology is pretty well aligned with that. I, I remember, what was I, probably year... I was in year 10 going to year 11 or something like that and um, spoke with one of the advisors at the school. You could choose your electives and um, yeah, I went in and I looked at all the electives and there were three, I think you got to choose three electives if I can remember rightly and there were three of them, um, three technology related electives and I was like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I, I want to be in tech. I want to do tech. I'm really excited about it. Sat down with this advisor and said, I'm doing these three tech ones. I think it was like software design and information process and information technology or something like that um and she said oh no you can't you can't do three three tech ones you know like that's uh that's uh, people don't do that you know you need to kind of broaden your horizons you're in school you need to try a few different things and i said this is what i want to do this is what i'm passionate about this is what i'm excited about and she's like oh, i'm greatly advising that that you don't do this and um i guess i've always been a little bit rebellious so i was like oh well mom and dad i'm doing this this is what i want to do and i know i'm excited about this and and it was probably the best thing I ever did because, yeah, jumped into those three subjects and um, uh, shot the lights out. And fortunately for me, there was a lot of overlap between the three. So I only had to do sort of uh, <laughs> one set of study to, to get good grades across uh, all three subjects. And maybe that's why she didn't want me to do it in the first place. But um, and, uh, it all worked out. And, yeah, I think um, I've been doing tech sort of ever since. Fixed computers when I was a, a young kid for the lady down the street for $20 or something, you know. And, um, yeah, here I am. So, yeah, it's always what I've been excited about. 20 bucks back then would have been all right as well. Oh, it was heaps. Got me like four trips to Macca's, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back in the day, so you get a happy meal for three bucks. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I miss that. Yeah, I think between you and I, I've probably had one too many of those McDonald's <laughs> meals in our day. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, mate, so after school then, university. Was it yeah. university for you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So so I did go to Newcastle University um, for six months. So uh, could be a controversial topic here, but... Uh, look, there's no controversy there. That I went, I was in university, Newcastle University, doing a software engineering degree. Um, yeah, I did it for about six months. My wife, who's from overseas, she travelled to Australia. Uh, we met up, ended up getting married here. Jumped on a plane, flew to the states. We we're going to spend a year there. I was going to, I actually deferred uni for a year. I was going to come back and be a software developer, I guess, software engineer. Um, one year in the states turned into seven and worked three or four different jobs and sort of just worked my way up through the ranks and I've always been a big believer of, uh, you know, put in the hard yards and, and work hard and it'll pay off and that's just sort of what I did, just knuckled down and, and nice. worked hard over there and never looked back. So, yeah, yeah six months in Newcastle Uni and, and that was it. So, no degree. Um, but here I am, you know, so it's all good. Hey, you're not the first person. What is your thoughts? As you said, it may be controversial. I don't think it's controversial. I think it's uh, each to their own. I think I've seen people succeed with and without. Yeah. And I've seen people go back uh, later in life as well and do an MBA or something like that or a yeah. master's later in life. Um, mate, what's your thoughts on, on degrees? You would have worked mate, with numerous people throughout your time, people with and without degrees. What do you think uh, the value is? Yeah, I mean... It's a tough question. I mean, I, I think um, so that the first sort of four years out of uh, year 12, let's say, um, like I said, I did six months at uni, but really the first four years for me was just slogging it out in, in jobs that tech jobs. But um, like my first job when I got to the States was uh, fixing computers at a retail store, like sort of like the Geek Squad, if you've ever seen that, a bit yeah. like the Geek Squad, right? That was sort of my first job in the States. And um and that was hard work, you know, like long days, sort of 12 hour days, people bringing in their busted computers and full of dust and sometimes orange dust if they were smokers. And it just, just was <laughs> just a hard slog, you know. And so I think the first four years was a bit like that, you know, I kind of got, got away from retail and moved more into desktop support and similar thing there, supporting call centers, replacing hard drives and computers. And so I sort of look at the, the four years that I could have spent at, at uni, I spent, you know, doing entry level tech work and um, when I sort of after about that, that four or five year mark, I was probably equivalent to people that had a, a uni degree anyway, but I had sort of four or five years of experience, which um, probably got me the job sometimes over, over people that may have come out with a degree um, but didn't have any experience. So 
I think that's pretty unique to tech though. So I don't, I don't want to bag out degrees entirely. I think um, I think in the tech world, you can sort of make your career based on experience a yeah. lot of the time. Um, degrees teach a really good fundamental. So there was a lot of kind of gaps I had to fill and I've had pretty good support along the way from uh, sort of my managers and my leaders where I sort of identify, hey, I've got a gap here. I wouldn't mind going on a course to, um, you know, uh, fill that gap or, or give me a bit more um theoretical knowledge in in that area um so i think yeah if you can sort of be driven and this only applies to tech you, you can probably a lot of a lot of time get away with not, not having a degree or not having a an applicable degree like i know some some people that have non-technology degrees that are working in tech now and they're shooting the lights out so um yeah i mean that's i could talk probably talk about that a fair bit but uh that's that's sort of my high level thoughts on on that yeah, that's degrees. interesting man uh, yeah. this podcast, I'm going to obviously try to grow this over time. And uh, I think that'll be an interesting question to see people's different views on technology. I, I don't know some of the people I've met, uh, they love a degree, probably wouldn't even hire somebody unless they do have a degree. It's a yeah, bit of a, that's okay. I don't want to work there. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bit of a must to have. Um, and then other people like yourself, I don't know, I, I, I probably sit somewhere in between. I think I, I went to uni and did a degree, um, I think there's some value in what I did. I probably learned more in the first three, six months outside of the degree than I did in the three years doing the degree. Yeah. But I think to your point before, I think it probably does teach you some really good fundamentals. Um, I yeah. know it's a business degree, so I know it's not the same, but I think the fundamentals is, you know, and and how to learn maybe. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah, how to learn is important. I mean, I've always, I've always been sort of, uh, I guess, self-driven when it comes to learning, but I think... If, if you're the kind of person that, um, you know, doesn't really, so I do a lot of reading, um, not just books, but I don't know, blogs and Twitter and what people are talking about, what people are writing. And um, that's, that's probably helped, I think. I've kind of done a lot of self, self-teaching and, um, like I said, seek, seek out different courses. So a couple of years ago, I'd, I'd done a heap of tech courses sort of every year in a row. And then I said, I want to do a tech course this year and I, I went and seeked out something non-tech that was sort of related. Um, uh, it was a course at the uni, Newcastle Uni, actually co, co-run by Slingshot. And we can talk about that later maybe. But I thought that was a really great course that um, you know, I'd spent a bit of time seeing what was going on and it just happened to pop up, I think, in an ad or something. And yeah, was like, that the entrepreneurial one? Yeah, yeah, Star yeah. 4000. So yeah. it's like their uh, startups and entrepreneurship and innovation course. And, yeah. Um, Run over the span of a semester, I think. So there were uni people in there. Yeah. Um, they were doing it as part of their degree. Uh, I just hit up the uni and said, "Hey, can I do this course? I think it's really interesting. I like kind of what yeah. what the idea is here, and um, it's kind of focused in in an area I want to learn more about and how startups work and how I can take some of that um, startup thinking and apply it back to uh, the corporate environment." And yeah. Um, yeah, a bit of back and forth, and they're like, "Oh, it's it's for alumni." I was like, "Well, I'm not really alumni." Um, I said, but I'm, I'm keen to get along and they're like, yeah, all right, sweet, let's, let's do it. So, um, you know, I think I was maybe one of two or three in that first one that wasn't a student or wasn't alumni, but sort of just forced my way in there and, yeah. um, yeah, it was great. I think it's actually really, uh, set me up for the role I'm in and what I've been doing over the last few years because it just solidified some things I was thinking and kind of made me question a lot of different things. They brought in a bunch of different speakers, um, some, some from over the world, some from over Australia to talk about what they're doing and, and yeah, it was a really great course and. That's the kind of thing that I think has been beneficial is kind of targeting uh, the things yeah. I want to invest in from a, a learning point of view as opposed to just having a broad uh, degree and yeah, know, not being Mate, I'm, so. I'm a massive uh, massive believer in sort of learning and continual learning. I think mm. man, my Audible account's growing by the day and I don't even want to look at what my iTunes bill looks like because <laughs> uh, the amount of books I'm, you know, I've bought on there, I'm always yeah, on yeah. podcasts. So my podcast books... Um, Audio books, mate. I, I'm a big believer in all that, but I do massive props to Slingshot as well for that program. I think, mate. I think the biggest key to that one is, I think you may mention of, is like it teaches you how to maybe look at things differently. And I think, yeah. like in the startup world, right, you've got to you've got to react so quick, quickly, and you've got to react to changes, and you're growing and pivoting and changing so quickly. And I think how you can take that learning and take that thought process and apply it back to your day-to-day business yeah. i think it's a key skill right like i think more people could look at that like i think you and i both got interest in the startup world right yeah i think the, the thought process around how how quickly startups can grow and how they can gain traction so quickly and how they can pivot and how they can you know just change on the run i think that sort of learning 
um, I think you can take a lot of that back to, you know, a non-startup environment and you can be massively beneficial because of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I learned the word entrepreneur uh, yeah. uh, during that course. I'd never really heard of it before, but it really resonated with me and sort of what I've been doing. And, um, you know, that's, I guess for those that don't know, that's like being an entrepreneur, but in, inside yeah. of a corporate and inside yeah, like of in-house. A, an established, in-house inside yeah. of an established company. And, um yeah, even disrupting from within and and thinking differently, and, and and it's really stuck with me since since doing that. And I think especially in my new role now, with a bit bit more time to focus on some of these things, I want to sort of drive that that let let that entrepreneur out a bit, and um, yeah, just try some different things, pivot, act like a startup, um, and, fail fast. and think differently. Yeah, fail fast. Huge fan of failing fast. Huge, huge fan of just shipping and getting something out there and learning from the customers. So. Uh, yeah, I, I give huge props to that course and, and slingshot what they've done and, and I think they still run it every year and um, definitely encourage people to try and get amongst it. Just force your way in there like, like I did if, uh, <laughs> if you didn't go the year. We'll look it up. I'll look it up <laughs> and see if, if, if it's currently running out. We'll put a link to it in uh, in the show yeah, notes yeah, again. Yeah. Um, I know Hopefully they don't get upset with me saying force your way in. But I'll yeah. Watch, oh, I think I think it's beneficial, right? Yeah. That's um, back on the university and the university is obviously, you know, the whole university and education is changing and continually changing. So I think it's great on them for, you know, yeah. actually – breaking the rules a little bit to allow you in but yeah yeah oh look i2n and that whole sort of ecosystem they're building around newcastle is um is, is great it's huge it's it's exactly what we need here to to move away from um you know the, the sort of steel city towards a, a tech city and a tech hub so i think it's really exciting yeah hey, i completely agree yeah. mate swing up right swing back just a little bit yeah you mentioned learning books mate what if you had to say hey somebody else is around newcastle at the moment working in the tech world let's say a little bit more traditional technology um aspiring to a, a role like you in a couple of years time and what's the sort of learnings that you've you know what best book you've read or best podcast you've listened to lately uh i probably don't i haven't i'm probably not listening to a lot of tech stuff lately um so i'm reading a few pretty good books right now um i just finished sapiens reading homo deus which is kind of follow-up to that that's that's really yeah. interesting I they're know. both in my books account yeah yeah, yeah. great got to read it awesome awesome stuff and um yeah, just again, it's one of those books that makes you look at things a bit differently and think about things differently. And that's kind of um, a lot of what I've been listening to and reading. So, yeah, Sapiens and Homo Deus. Uh, I've been a fan of Tim Ferriss and I guess on the podcast, listening to the Tim Ferriss podcast here yeah. and there. Not all of them, not really religiously, but um, sort of pick and choose. But I've been reading, I've read his books, um, uh, you know, Tribe of Mentors, I'm yeah. sort of looking at now. And um, yeah, what else? So, I've got a whole bunch there. I've, I read the gene, which I'm sort of interested in genomics and um, where that's going. So there's a great book called The Gene. Yeah, uh, right. It's like the history of the gene. Yeah. Um, so it sort of talks about how they discovered the, gen- the genes and DNA and genetic code and how that works. And but it's not not super sciencey, so it's it's more of a history yeah. kind of retelling of that book. Um, and there's a, another book I'm looking at around, it's called Cracking Creation. That's uh, uh, I've actually just bought that. I've yeah, seen somebody okay. else post about that. Um, what was it? I seen somebody else post about that on uh, on Twitter the other day. Yeah, and um, I went, oh, okay, go and bought that. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's been a genetic break breakthrough a few years ago called CRISPR, and um, that that book is about that that sort of breakthrough and how CRISPR is going to unlock uh, sort of a, it's it's a technology I guess that's yeah. going to unlock really simple uh, cost effective gene editing and it'll underpin a lot of what we'll see in the next uh, you know many years to come. So yeah, those those aren't really techie books, but um, I'm sort of trying to broaden my my, my thinking a bit there, I guess. No, um, I, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that, you know, the tech tools, you know, some of them are, are phenomenal and there's obviously value to tech tools. But when you're looking at, you know, what you're talking about, I think in a roundabout way, if, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're strong in the head and you're strong in the body, you know, you're going to be better at work and you'll be smarter and well, yeah. maybe not smarter, but you'll, you'll think clearer Yeah. and yeah. then you can make better use of those tools, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, you could be, you could be the smartest cookie in the world, but if you're not sleeping well and you're, crazy overweight and yeah. you're not exercising you're sick you're not going to be great at work right yeah. yeah i try and focus on sleep um it's hard i got two kids and uh and a little one that sleeps whenever she wants and wakes whenever she wants so that's hard but i think yeah sleep sleep's important i can definitely notice when i've had uh, a few good nights of sleep versus staying up late burning the candle at both ends so um yeah i mean it's all sort of nothing groundbreaking but it might sound a bit corny but yeah sleeping well eating well if you call bacon and eggs eating well um <laughs> uh, <laughs> fasting yeah that sort of stuff yeah i think just just see what works for you though i'm not prescribing anything to anyone just um 
I just like to try different things out and see how I feel and what what's working. So yeah, that's cool. And we're not. Yeah. This is new tech, people. It's not new tech and health and <laughs> mindset. But uh, mate, I I think I agree. I think it probably speaks to you know why you've been successful and what you're doing, right? Like you're prepared to experiment. Yeah. Um, whether that be through work or with your body or your mind or life, like. I think that's just it's a mindset, right? And I think yeah. the mindset's the key part there. It's just like, hey, you're probably in the role, especially this new role. Yeah. You're probably in that because of the mindset and your your way of thinking that you're prepared to do these sort of things. Like, yep. And there's not too many people out there willing to give that sort of thing a crack. Yeah, yeah. There's some little um, techie bits in there like Oak and Zero and, and yeah. those types of things. I think you find the apps that work. And um, yeah, I've got, I've got an Alexa at home now. That's, that's sort of interesting tech device in my life. We're still... Uh, uh, trying to see what the best use case is for that. Right now, it's playing music and turning the light on and off because I've got one of those free bulbs with it. So, yeah, um, yeah ho- hopefully, there's there's more of that that, that becomes useful. But yeah, uh, right now, so the big focus is on those and trying out different skills and stuff. And I think I think it's going to be pretty big. I think voice is going to be pretty big. Um, you know, there's a few smart. Or, there's a few smart voice, people so. speaking pretty heavily around voice, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the big players are behind it, right? Like yeah. Amazon and Google, are right? You know, yeah. investing a lot of cash in that. So, yep. those those two tend to be on the mark. Yeah, yeah, they do. Like I think uh, you got, I, I saw something pretty good the other day. Somebody said you don't need a, a user manual for for voice, right? Like yep. you, you know how to talk to someone. Um, you know how to talk to a, a device. You can have a conversation. So I think that's going to be a really low barrier for entry when. Um, when, when it's sort of mainstream and, and gets out there a fair bit. So pretty excited about that and definitely experimenting a fair bit with that sort of stuff in, in my life and at work as well, both work and home. That's pretty good when they can come together. So yeah. oh, That's cool, man. Yeah. So we'll see like you'll be able to walk into NRB soon and just talk to Alexa and turn lights on and off for the entire building. Is, yeah. that, <laughs> is that where we're going? I don't know about that, but it'd be pretty cool to have solar panels on the roof anyway. Um, that might be something we could uh, think about. So yeah. No, that's cool, man. Yeah. Um, mate. You're in Newcastle, obviously, as am I. Yep. Uh, it's raining right now. It's pretty cold, but it's usually oh, mate, It is cold, <laughs> isn't it? Um, mate, we're sitting in the, the new common. Um, and a bit of co-work space on Hunter Street here. Mate, why Newcastle? A guy like yourself, obviously, you spent some time in the US. Um, yep. Come back to Newcastle, obviously, family-related. Um, mate, there's a, probably a stigma around Newcastle. There's not many opportunities here, especially from a tech perspective. Mate, what's – mate, Question one, why Newcastle? Question two, what's your opinion on the tech scene here? Yep, okay. Um, why Newcastle? So, yeah, I mean, the biggest driver when I came back was was family, I guess, and, and I sort of said to myself, well, I'll, I'll sort out work later. But So I think it's a great uh, family scene, great work-life balance. Um, it's, a, it's a great town. The beaches are awesome. Um, there's, there's plenty of stuff to do here to keep your kids and family entertained. Uh, it's not not too crazy, not too crazy busy, but um, probably just busy enough. It's starting to get a lot busier. It took me a little while to get over here today, but um, yeah, I think it's really good if you're looking for that that work life balance. Like when I was working in California, uh, probably worked 14 hour days, and that's just sort of what everyone was doing. Everyone's focused on on their their job and their work, and um, not thinking too much about the family and having that good work life balance. So, uh, so you definitely get that in Newcastle, and that's that's something that I try to focus on. Um, and I think I think the the Newcastle is sort of uh, I mean you know this might be cliche as well, but it is going through a bit of a revival. You know, like obviously everyone's talking about it. And there's uh, the city starting to liven up a bit. There's a lot of little co-working spaces coming around, and um, the sort of tech and startup community is pretty good. I think we could definitely use some more big tech companies here. You know, like uh, Google, Facebook. Um, Amazon, Microsoft, so anyone who's listening, if you want to come here, <laughs> I'd be happy to t- introduce you to a few people. But um, I think that'd help, you know. Like, um, you know, I'm I'm really happy where I am and and, uh, and having a great time there. But I think it'd just be it'd be great for the town to have uh, a few more places around that are really pushing the barrier on technology, sort of at a bigger scale as well, and um, doing some interesting things there. But the startup community is great as well, which which is really awesome to see that flourishing. So yeah. yeah, I think that's building, mate. And I think that the tech scene, as in traditional technology roles, are growing as well. I think quite in the back in the days, let's say there's probably five, four or five big size tech employers, right? Yeah. And if you're in that, if you're in the tech, if you're a tech professional and you you want to move from one to the other, there's one crust off your list. You've got yeah. three more to go yeah, yeah and then yeah. and they're your only options right but i think what's happened over the past two three years i think especially is that next tier down of tech teams 
let's say a dozen to two dozen employee employees in the tech team, that sort of level is growing. So I think yeah. what we used to have just a couple of smaller, smaller companies in and around that, I think the tech teams in and around that so that that dozen type number are growing, which creates more opportunity, right? Yep. And I think um as you sort of made mention, I think there's I think it's great to move out of, you know, Coal City, Newcastle's, you know, built on, you know, one industry. Yeah. Yep. I think um not only that it's not really that pure technology businesses that are growing, but more traditional businesses that are using technology to move into the 21st century and to yeah. grow and to yeah. to change and to, to move forward, right? I think yeah, yeah. those more traditional businesses are starting to invest in technology and that's where opportunities are coming. I think that's the most exciting part. My yeah, perspective. I mean, absolutely. I mean, look, we're, we're, uh, where I'm at, uh, NIB, we're a health insurer and sort of we're born out of Newcastle and... I don't think anyone would have really looked at us as a tech company, but we've certainly uh, got our brand out there and got our name, um, you know, at a lot of different conferences and summits and uh, we're open sourcing a bunch of stuff. And so we're, we're definitely very active in the tech community. And I think that's great when businesses can support that and, um, you know, uh, can actually use technology to solve some some real problems as well, not just building, uh, you know, social networks and that sort of stuff, but actually solving some, some real problems that are out there, particularly in the health space. I'm pretty passionate about that, but I'm... Um, a big believer in in communities as well like uh, over in the one thing that was influenced in the states particularly in california was um sort of having that strong sort of tech community meetups um you know co-working spaces that sort of stuff as soon as i got back i said oh pretty passionate about the cloud and devops and that sort of stuff so i started a um a meetup here in town uh infracoders and and devops meetup it's really uh you know we just get together um semi-regularly you know let's say sort of four to six times a year talk about what people are working on somebody might give a presentation particularly in the cloud devops or infrastructure as code space that, that kind of thing um but i've really seen over the last six years since i've been back that that community flourish and you know, we've got agile newcastle now and um there's a newcastle js meetup and uh newcastle coders group which has really been the flagship meetup for newcastle it's been going 10 years yeah, you know, yeah. and it's been flying the flag for a long time but there's there's lots of different meetups now and um you know it just seems like there's about one every fortnight which uh six years ago they'd be lucky to be one a year you know and, uh, apart from the coders group which run every month but um it's great to see it's great to see that get out there more and um got a pretty pretty good slack community growing now and everyone's sort of getting together and sharing ideas and yeah um yeah it's good i think community is super important and yeah every time we lose someone at nib it's it's tough when they move on to another company but but part of me sort of outside nib goes well at least they're moving on to another company in newcastle and and spreading the idea and the ideas and growing the community and and they'll come back and share what they're doing and everyone will have a different take on things so yeah, yeah it's really cool to see that Happening. Mate, I completely agree. I think, um, mate, there's a lot of little siloed communities within, t- like, I think there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. Yeah. Um, as you said, there's a number of different of the meetups. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be nice to bring them all together, right? Um, yep. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be regularly, but that's what I might try to do with this is just to try to, you know, give insights into different people, right? So somebody from the, um, one of the other meetups now gets a bit of an insight into who you are and what you're trying to do. And that's essentially what I'm trying to do with this is give people an insight into what else is going on around Newcastle, right? Like there could be somebody that's been working in the technology scene locally in Newcastle for 10 years and doesn't know of you, right? Yeah. Um, or doesn't know some of the cool stuff you're working on. I think this this avenue might give people a bit of an insight into that. Um, somebody might reach out and you say, hey, Matt, we're thinking about going down this route. Could you provide us some, you know, some information? I just think as a whole, if Newcastle community sort of grows and yeah. goes up to that next level it sort of upskills everyone yeah absolutely i think the whole knowledge sharing between um companies in newcastle is, is really important too like i've uh before i gave the talk at the aws summit um i got down to one of our local companies here and gave the talk there and they were uh, i was fortunate that they let me come in and present to them but it's a bit of a two-way i got a chance to rehearse and they got a chance to hear uh our journey and actually ask some sort of more intimate questions in a in a more intimate setting and um and it's really good. Like we're we're not competing, obviously, in, in a business sense. So I'm happy to just you know walk walk down the street and come in and present and um, talk to the team and have have sort of two way dialogue. And um, they'll be doing things that we're not, so we can get learnings from that. And yeah, I think like I said, the community grows as a collective, and that's um that's pretty important all, all around. So big supporter of that, and definitely want to see everyone come together and 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 work more and 
I don't think there's too many competing companies in Newcastle, which is good that, that it's small and, and we can do that as well. So, uh, mate, completely agree. Completely agree. Um, mate, we'll we'll wrap it up soon. Mate, what is your thoughts on Newcastle? Where's Newcastle going to be in, let's call it, 10 years' time? Um, hopefully the light rail is a roaring success, but I won't <laughs> touch that too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, so... Um, I did want to say, and, and, and you probably hear it here first if it hasn't been announced yet, that we are looking to bring DevOps Days to Newcastle later that's this massive. year. So that's a, an, a nationwide conference. It happens once a year. Um, you know, It's been Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, um, but we've been working with the DevOps Australia founders to bring it to Newcastle uh, later this year, hopefully in October. Yep. Um, so I'm pretty sure by the time this thing's live, it'll all be uh, announced and, and out there on the DevOps Days website. And um, yeah, I think that I'd, I'd like to see more uh, sort of nationwide style conferences, countrywide conferences come to Newcastle and um, something we really want to do with DevOps Days, people will be flying in from different uh, different states and different cities, major cities and um, we really want to try and show Newcastle off a bit and, um, and particularly when we do a call for proposals and have some talks out there, we want to get some Newcastle people up talking about what, what they're doing uh, across the city and... Um, DevOps Days is, has, is about half structured conference, half unconference. So there's a lot of open spaces that happen as well where anyone can propose a topic and talk about it. And I'd uh, love to see Newcastle people participating in that. And um, like I said, there's many people from Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, um, you know, Perth, all, all over the country coming coming to this. So it's a great opportunity to pick their brain, but also show them we're doing some really cool stuff here. So um, yeah, just wanted to plug that, I guess. But where's Newcastle going? Um, yeah, I think... We've got probably a bit of a Melbourne vibe. We're not not uh, somewhere between Melbourne and Sydney, which which is cool. Like I, I sort of rate both those places. Wouldn't live at either of the, either of them. So um, happy to be here. And if we can keep up the the Sydney Melbourne vibe and and kind of make make a niche for ourselves somewhere in the middle there and um, stay pretty creative, but but have some. Uh, we need to get some bigger businesses in here. I think that's that's some from from my experience. Like I, most of my experience is in sort of the bigger bigger shops and. Um, it's hard. There's not a lot of places to move around at that level. You sort of have to yeah. take a step down to a smaller company, I guess, if you want to um, change things up. So I'd love to see some some bigger companies come in. But I think Newcastle can definitely be a put themselves on the map as a innovation city, um, tech city. We can start doing some. We, we need to start doing some trials, self driving cars, all that sort of stuff. Like we should definitely be a part of that. So yeah, yeah. I think some of the stuff going on with the IoT um, in in around that space is, yeah. is strong in Newcastle. Smart city stuff. There's some grants in that, and I think that that could get really interesting. Yeah, um, I think there's some smart there. people around. Like, not yeah. I think I know there's some smart yeah. people around, and it's good to see some. You know, some of those people starting to get some of their proposals ticked, and you yep. know, we're starting to move forward with that. So I think, I, mate, I completely agree. I yep. would like to see it continue to move forward, continue to grow. Yep. I think. Um, and I think the real estate, you know, market in Sydney is starting to drive some people up here. So yeah, yeah. I think that's exciting. It brings some new talent to the area. Yep. Fresh set of eyes, I think, is always good. Yep. Um, so it's also exciting from a recruitment perspective. There's fresh, fresh blood, <laughs> um, but fresh skills, right? Like it allows it allows blood, it allows me yeah. an opportunity to bring you know um, fresh blood out of Sydney. Yeah, um, yeah. And you know, put that in a in a local company. And I, I mean, the, the sort of value you can bring with fresh, fresh set of eyes and fresh skills, um, it's really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I um, yeah, I think there's gonna be big things, and and more we start trying different things out. Like the good thing about Newcastle is it's small enough that we can run these trials with IoT and um, self-driving cars and and whatever else we want to run. It's small enough to actually try that out and and see how how it works in a small city before trying to roll it out somewhere that's um, much more complex to do. So um, yeah, yeah, bring it on, and um, yeah, happy to be a part of that. It's really exciting. Happy days, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Thanks cool. for coming in on uh. New tech people number one. Thanks, mate. Happy to have a coffee. Thank you. Sweet. Cool.